Ah, wake up, wake up, wake up. Ah, let's go. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Uh, test, 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 testeroo, testing, you know who. Welcome back artists, I'm Garrett and this is GB Brush. In today's drawing tutorial, we're gonna be drawing the human head and the proportions that go with that endeavor. I'll also be giving you guys some tips on how to draw some masculine features versus feminine features because you're not just gonna to wanna to draw unisex kind of, um, I don't know, mannequins, all right? That's not probably what you're after. Maybe that's what you're after, but you're gonna be able to do all three <clears throat> when you're done watching this video. Now, this is gonna most importantly give you the ability to draw from imagination more accurately, as well as when you're looking at reference images. If you wanna do a more realistic drawing than, for example, what I'm covering today, you're gonna need to one, watch this, and then also wait for a future tutorial where I add another step of realistic drawing on top of it. <clears throat> or you could watch some other video on YouTube. <sighs> Moving on, before we get started, let's quickly talk about some current events. If you look around my room, you might be as disappointed as I am. That's because I just moved apartments here in Seoul, South Korea, and I have yet to finish, uh, you know, completing my home office slash home studio. Stay tuned though, because I'm actually filming that process and I'll later on put out a video all about um, how to create or maybe give you ideas on how to create a home studio in a tight space. With that, let's change perspectives and get into this drawing tutorial. As is customary, the wristwatch check, I'm wearing my Orient Ray 2. The sheer value of this Epic watch is hard to deny, so I don't know if I'll ever be able to get rid of it. And today I got it on the blue rubber strap which is perfect for resting my hand down while drawing. What else do I got here? I have just a regular pencil. I'm using a HB. It's like a medium, not too hard, not too soft. A fine-tuned drafting eraser, just something I like to use. And I probably won't need it much, but a eraser guard and a big eraser. I'll probably end up using these two the most and of course a pencil sharpener. What are the basic shapes to a head? Well, the first thing you're gonna need to do is um, throw out your ruler because there's gonna be no straight lines. So um, in the past, I brought these guys, but you're not gonna use it today. Um, the first thing you need is a circle. In a previous tutorial, um, you could say my first drawing tutorial, I talked about how you're gonna make better curves stroking away from your hand as opposed to stroking in, but it's also good to draw with your whole arm or draw with your elbow as opposed to your fingers. That's gonna give you better circles. Let's see what I could come up with here. Let's see. Circle, that's not too bad. Let's kind of fill it back in, all right? We'll say that's close enough. This is gonna be, you could say, the egg shape of the top of the head. Now, the next thing you need to decide is where are you gonna have the face or the head pointing? Now, the best way to put that in is with the jaw as well as center line. This head I'm gonna be having angled a little bit down and uh, to the side. It's gonna be kind of like a somewhat profile. So this is going to be the center line going down the front. Now, uh, Again, you could just draw this with several strokes and eventually find the true line. And then I'll put just a faint uh, back to this ellipse, um, just so I know, just so I could kind of help visualize the three-dimensionality. Three I hope I'm saying that right. Um, but you want the front line to be a little bit stronger so you don't uh, forget which direction you're looking. I'm gonna move this ellipse a little bit more over. Now let's figure out what the brow line is. It's gonna be a little bit, we're gonna be looking slightly down on top of it, uh, on top of this person's uh, head. 
And uh, again, if you want some tips on drawing in perspective, you can look at my uh, former tutorial about drawing in perspective. Now that we have the brow line as well as the center line of the, you could say the top of the skull established, we could tell that the face is going to be pointing in this direction and you can line up the back as well as the front to figure that out. All right, so we could say that we're looking in this direction. Now we need to place the jaw. For this drawing, I'm not really considering is this going to be a male or a female. You could draw a straight line down and you don't want the jaw to be too long. I mean, unless you're drawing a really, I don't know, strong jawed male. Uh, you don't want the jaw to be too, too long. You want it to be just a little bit longer than the base of the skull kind of sphere. You realize a head is not a perfect sphere. It's kind of cut off on the sides. And so we're going to actually create another third. We're going to break this skull up into thirds. And this is going to kind of help us find the measurements for some other parts of the skull, as well as help us kind of shape the, the brow line here, because there's, there's kind of a flattened off side to people's skulls. So now that we have this kind of th thirded off sphere, let's, um, this gives us the measurement to kind of place the jaw and the ear. So we could put an ear right here. Some people like to put the jaw in first. I don't really think it matters too much because the bottom of the jaw is going to attach to the bottom of the ear right here at the base of this thirded off sphere. And, you know, again, depending on the gender or the desired effect, you can uh, strengthen or weaken this kind of jaw here. But for this genderless person, we'll just kind of simplify. So we'll have this kind of going off in this direction like that. And then that'll give us the basic shape. I might as well put a, um, a neck in real quick. Here, I'll put it, it's slightly behind the ear at the base of the skull. So you could kind of, you can kind of see that the back of the head goes on further behind the ear than the skull. And the neck connects, uh, of course, behind the ear. And it kind of slopes off backward. Um, and then there's going to be some extra muscles that connect the, uh, the neck accordingly. I'll clear this up a little bit. We can't see behind this too much. Some people like to make this, the, this line right here, the eye line, as opposed to the brow line. I guess you can't really, you know, everybody's got their own method, but to get the measurements right, I like to keep this as the brow because now what you're going to do, if it's a male, you want to build this brow up a little bit. If it's a female, you kind of just want to leave it about the same. The eye socket kind of comes out a little bit here, and then you could add a little bit of cheekbone popping out the side, and we'll have it kind of sloping down. Let's add a nose. So again, this is the brow, so the brow kind of connects to the nose, and since we're looking at the side of the nose, the nose is sticking out a little bit. So here I'll slope this down. And you could say the base of the nose usually lines up with the base of the ear. That's just a general kind of proportion that you can kind of lock in and then use as a starting point to propel yourself into, you know, experimentation to find different characters. You know, some people have shorter noses, some people have longer noses, but a general safe proportion is the base of the ear. Um, let me actually raise that ear a little bit because it's slightly behind. So we want to raise it up a little bit. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is then you're going to want to half the distance between the chin and the base of the nose to kind of place a mouth. Again, these are general proportions. Um, you can have all kinds of fun. Um, you could have all kinds of fun playing with these proportions uh, to, to, you know, find unique and diverse characters. Um, and you could actually have a lot of fun looking at people just on the street. Uh, you'll find that there are lots of unique different people out there with different kinds of uh, measurements and stuff. But this is a good starting point, you know, for you to then expand on. Because I didn't give much of a brow, this is starting to look a little bit more of like a female character. Let me actually extend this out a little bit. 
And let me place the hint of a eyebrow here. Now the eyebrow is not a straight line, but you can use the brow line as a base to kind of go up over and then slightly down. So we'll just put that there. And then we'll kind of just place the eye socket here. And uh, it'll go kind of like, like so. I'll have to do a whole nother tutorial on, you know, the individual features of faces, you know, because you're going to need, if you want to draw with, you know, real accuracy, you're going to need to draw a specific, or you're going to need a specific tutorial on each feature, you know, the nose from different angles, the mouth from different angles and such. All right. And let's just uh, add a little bit of hair. Let's say... The hairline, I'll put a little bit swoop down. I'll, I'll just make this a female character because I didn't give her, I didn't really give it the right brow for it to be a masculine male. And since I'll make it a female, I'll just tighten this jaw up a little bit. My next character, I'll just make it a male just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about as far as the differences go. I'll accentuate these lips a little bit, bring out that cheek a little bit more. Make sure you line up these, these points of the eye and I'll just have, I don't want to get too detailed with the eyes, so I'll just have her eyes kind of closed um, and I'll give her some eyelashes here. So I'll make it real obvious that I'm drawing a female. And let's give her some basic hair. Again, hair is another big feature you could do a whole nother tutorial on. All right, that's a good first start. Now let's do a skull kind of facing slightly more direct at us. I'll just have the sphere just slightly off tilt. Um, and you can see, and you can establish that by drawing your uh, center line just slightly off. So now what's next? Um, do you remember? Correct, we need the uh, brow line. And this brow will be, again, almost looking right at us maybe slightly down. So I'll have this ellipse just kind of very poised to be mostly directly at us. Let's cut off the sides at, again to create um, the thirded off measurements of this kind of skull. It's gonna be kind of looking almost just past our shoulder. And because this is a masculine, a male character, we can drop the chin a little bit lower. And we know the ear is going to be uh, about here. Let's swing that out. And we're looking directly on the ear, so it's going to be going backwards a little bit more. I like to put this little line here, uh, a hint right there, and then kind of like a, a hook right there. Um, we can get very detailed into ears later. But for now, that's a good enough start. And we can use this measurement right here to find the where the jaw connects. And let's drop it down and let's swoop it to the front. But we know the base of the other ear is about right here. So let's bring the jaw from there down and then let's swoop it around. Now again, let's put the base of the nose, which is gonna be about the bottom of the ears about right here. And the nose from the front, and again, it's slightly going off more to the side. We can put it here like that, and then kind of have the nostril flaring out. And, you know, with, uh, I don't know, men or, or like very, maybe older men or men with strong features, you can get a little bit more creative with these, uh, you could say measurements, have a stronger chin, stronger uh, bigger nose. I mean, you could do the same thing with, with uh, females also, but it's going to be difficult because if you overdo it in some elements, it's going to lose the feminine kind of nature to it. So let's give this guy a strong nose. And what we need to do is now connect it to the brow. And I like to connect the, the bridge of the nose right to the brow, especially 
this is easier if the if the head is tilted a little bit. If the head is directly on, there's not really a clear line connecting the nose to the brow line. So that's one advantage to having the head slightly off tilt. Again, the eyebrows kind of uh, start a little bit below the brow line, go a little bit over the brow line, and then kind of come back down. Let's give them slightly stronger eyebrows. I'm actually going to remove the top of this nose a little bit more off center because we'll give them slightly a bigger nose. And then I'll bring the front of the nose a little bit further forward by erasing. Now, again, with men, um, again, you want to have a slightly stronger brow. That's where this line kind of comes in, where this line on the side of the skull creates. Um, you could say the edge of the head and it kind of deflects the, uh, it makes like a different face inward. And so I'm going to kind of create a somewhat of a brow here and then I'm going to swing the cheekbone out a little bit. Actually, this jaw is a little bit too narrow. So I'm going to bring this guy over a little bit. When you're doing the front on face, one thing you could um, use is kind of from the center of the ear, swooping down to the side of the chin. This kind of line right here helps you establish the general um, kind of cheek shape. This is a simplified shape right here with this line kind of going this direction um, because, uh, because the cheekbone kind of somewhat kind of curves down a little bit but this is definitely a good way to establish a gesture of of your character like this this with this lady um you could put it right here like that as such once you get into realism or realistic drawing um, you're not going to want to make this line too strong because uh, a lot of the jowl muscles and the cheekbone kind of kind of alter this line a little bit but it's definitely helpful as a gesture uh, as is this kind of uh, line here. My ellipse in the beginning wasn't quite curved properly. And let me swing this ear out a little bit more. All right, so now we got to do the eyes. So let's put a little bit of an eye here and here. And you don't want the eyes to be too close together. Again, this is something you'll just have to practice a lot to feel out. But you can kind of make sure they're lined up properly by putting initially a dot on either side of the, uh, uh, the nose. And then from there, draw kind of like an almond shape. And this is like for the actual eye. Another good thing you could do is kind of just kind of carve out the eye socket um, first. Uh, and you can draw that eye socket directly from the end of the eyebrow, kind of swooping around up into the front of the eyebrow. Depending on your character, you know, Asian characters don't have as prominent of a... Of a um, you could say plane, a downward facing plane right here. But with uh, Caucasian characters or Western characters, it's a little bit more pronounced. Again, we'll have to save that for a more advanced tutorial. I need to swoop this side of the skull out a little bit more. There we go. It was looking a little bit odd there. But I got to swoop this side of the skull out a little bit more. So that's a good start. Let's see. Let's add... Uh, top eyelid here, top eyelid, and we could add the, you could say the beginnings of a pupil. And now let's place the mouth, which again is usually between halfway between the chin and the bottom of the nose. Let's have it smirking. And um, we'll start like that. And then the end of the lips you could kind of have is like a curling back towards the nostril. So you don't want your mouth to get too far away from the nostril because otherwise it just won't really line up properly. And then you can do a bit bottom of the lip right here. Like in here, the top lip is usually sticking out forward more than the bottom lip. So you can demonstrate by putting a stronger shadow on the top lip than the bottom lip generally. Okay, so the next thing with a male character is you'll notice that the neck is generally a little bit thicker. So I'll have this neck kind of about the same thickness as the jaw. Again, there's kind of like neck muscles going down this way. 
figure out where the hair oh bump the camera again where's the hairline going to go well the hairline is not at the very top but i would say roughly about where these two side uh, you know kind of intersecting ellipses kind of meet so right about here and let's just kind of have it um, i don't know slicking back so again there's so many different hairstyles and so many different things you can you know learn from from hair uh so we'll have to just save that for another tutorial let's make this guy slightly balding so let's have this hairline kind of falling back and then again the on the sides don't forget to have a side uh you know a sideburn here and then the hairline kind of comes out to the side of this ellipse on the side of the skull it comes about here and then it dro drops back and then if you want the hairline to be receding like on the older guy uh you want it to go way up there so let's have his hair kind of going as such I'm kind of liking this guy. He looks pretty, he's got a lot of character. And let's have his hair sticking slightly out the side over on this side. That's pretty good. We could add a little bit of shading over here. A little bit of shading under the eye. And let's add a little bit of shading under the chin. just to give a general understanding of the shapes. There's so much to talk about when it comes to human anatomy that we'll just have to get into later. But uh, again, this is just the proportions of human skulls. All right, now let's move on to the final head. So what I'll do for this third head is I'll just jump into a time lapse and then um, talk about it a little bit at the end. And uh, I'll probably shade this final head up a little bit more and use it as an opportunity to just uh, practice my own drawing, which is always a good time. So I'll check back with you guys at the end. So that will about do it. A couple of unique challenges for drawing a character in this perspective is you have to draw the underside of the chin. And uh, the way that the chin kind of connects to the neck can be a little bit challenging, but it's essentially like this triangle shape that kind of comes down. The jaw isn't just a straight line. So keep that in mind. Full transparency. On this character and this character, I had no reference, and so maybe that's how they came together quicker and perhaps a little bit more cartoony. But with this character, I used the same methods to construct the head and the pose, but then I did have a reference image to kind of help me with the shading and the lighting and the subtleties of this unique pose. So especially whenever you're looking at specific hairstyles or head accessories like cigarettes or sunglasses, um, don't be afraid to use a reference image. If you liked the video, found it useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and 
Uh, this is a small and young channel, so of course, subscribe if you enjoyed, all right? Stay tuned for more videos coming soon, and as always, keep making that art. Adios.